third dimensional bound. So this is joint work with uh, Jakob Rehoff. And uh, this talk will not be about some new type system given by the god of type systems as in the previous talk. Uh, and I also will not try to state a particular problem and give you a solution for this particular problem. This talk will be more about trying to give you some maybe new ideas uh, on strange things that you can do to types um, in the intersection type system. So already in the previous talk, you have seen some details on intersection types. So mainly there are intersections of types. You can state properties. So you have a piece of code, and this code is a function from integer to integer and also a function from Boolean to Boolean, and that you can state as intersection type. Uh, and therefore, to derive such intersection type, you have to type this particular piece of code by those two types, for example. Uh, there is a rich history on intersection types, and probably you can fill a whole uh, course uh, in computer science only with intersection types. Uh, they have a lot of properties. I think I've uh, seen at least four uh, talks where at some point intersection types uh, came up uh, during the last two days. Uh, unfortunately, since they are so expressive, uh, all the interesting properties of intersection types uh, are undecidable. Uh, for us, uh, intersection types are interesting because uh, due to the intersection, you can specify different uh, properties of a single piece of code, and there, therefore we use them for code synthesis. So we specify what properties uh, our pieces of code have, and by inhabitation, we produce a new code, uh, a new piece of code that has some desired properties. Um, this talk will not be about that. This talk will be about several restrictions of um, intersection types and what you can start thinking about once several of the properties become maybe decidable or feasible to uh, work with. Uh, there exists uh, many restrictions of intersection type system, and um, uh, here are two of them, uh, most, oh, uh, some of the most prominent, uh, the rank restriction and uh, the not idempotent uh, intersection type restriction. Uh, I think both of them, so the rank restriction came up uh, today during some talk, not for intersection types, but polymorphism, and the non-idempotency was uh, come up in the last talk, so I think uh, this already is uh, enough to say that uh, those two restrictions are maybe uh, one of the more important ones. Um, interestingly, for the rank restriction, um, uh, it strangely changes behavior from rank two to three. So you go up one rank and immediately uh, you go from decidability to undecidability. So in a sense, you take some infinite step uh, there. And also the strange thing about uh, rank is that it has no real connection to normal forms, whereas intersection type systems uh, have usually a strong connection to normal forms. So this restriction sometimes doesn't work as well as one would hope. Um, the non idempotent restriction, uh, there you have to put actual copies of your types. So types are used as resources. If you want to consume uh, some data two times, then you have to type this piece of data two times. So here, for example, uh, church normal two, if you want to use the function two times, then you need to be typing that function two times by this intersection of uh, alpha arrow alpha, intersect alpha arrow alpha. Um, and this uh, immediately leads to uh, what was uh, commented during the last talk, that typeability becomes undecidable since you need to figure out how often will you use some uh, pieces of code and uh, uh, such property is uh, usually uh, cannot be decided. Um, so let's look at a different restriction that was introduced two years ago at Popol 17. Uh, the dimensional restriction. I will not give you the full definition since the uh, talk would uh, then uh, take a lot longer and would repeat the uh, talk two years ago. Just to give you the intuition, the dimensional restriction does not try to restrict the types themselves, but tries to restrict um, the uh, type assignment or the actual um, the actual type derivation. So you uh, once you have a type derivation, uh, you can measure some properties of the type derivation. Namely, uh, you can measure how much intersection introduction is performed in a sense um, 
by the type and since intersection introduction is the most, most interesting part of the intersection type system, uh, this measure is from our perspective one of the more interesting ones to um, uh, measure derivations and maybe restrict type system uh, with respect to some upper bound n. So this uh, n measures uh, how many types some subterms are assigned in a given type derivation. Um, more or less duly to this uh, known item potent restriction, uh, you have uh, typeability uh, becomes uh, decidable. So once you know that uh, you will not introduce too many maybe intersection types, uh, then you can start talking about typeability and type checking, which are most useful for real uh, world programming languages. Uh, other properties uh, uh, of this uh, dimensional restriction is that entirely nonlinear, so you don't need to specify the, the, the types are not resources, so you don't need to specify um, how they're used in particular. Um, also, the syntax of the types is not restricted. You don't start to count how deep are you in the type. It's um, independent of rank, but it's just it, it's not a syntactical uh, restriction, but it's more of a proof theoretic uh, restriction. Here are two examples. Uh, the first example, typing the identity by an intersection of two arrow types. And as you can imagine, you need to introduce an intersection. Therefore, you um, uh, have a higher measure of uh, this derivation. Whereas for the uh, second term, lambda x, 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 although you use x two times and you have some intersections going on there, um, you don't need intersection introduction in particular to assign this type to. Uh, the term lambda x, uh, x, x, because you are not performing intersection introduction in the uh, type derivation. So if you are interested in the type system itself, you can uh, look at uh, Popol uh, 17 paper on dimensional restriction for intersection types. Uh, now, I uh, made some promises regarding some different perspectives, maybe on uh, types and what you can do to them. So let's... Uh, take some algebraic observations, not from um, category, uh, category theory point of view, but just uh, from first semester linear algebra course point of view. And uh, let's look at, um, for example, substitutions um, in intersection types. Uh, you can start adding substitutions by just intersecting uh, the uh, uh, results of applications of those substitutions uh, onto a given input sigma. And clearly, you can compose substitutions. Uh, in intersection types, since you can have an empty intersection, which if you intersect something with the empty intersection becomes this something will be uh, neutral. So if you substitute any variable by this empty intersection omega, it will become neutral with respect to addition. Uh, and also, if you take clearly the identity, it will be neutral with respect to uh, composition. So obviously, the structure is a semi-ring uh, no surprises there. But if we take the same uh, algebraic look onto intersection types, we may discover something interesting. Uh, clearly, intersection types with uh, intersection is uh, commutative mono monoids, since intersection is uh, commutative. Um, also, the empty intersection will be the identity element, since it's neutral. Um, also, no surprises there, but now if we have a commutative monoid uh, and also we have seen the algebraic structure of uh, substitutions, uh, we can observe, uh, and this is just an observation, there's no particular uh, deep theorem to prove, just state the properties of a SIMA module and uh, verify that the intersection types uh, are. Uh, this algebraic structure, so you have uh, just verify the rules of the uh, semi-module, uh, and you have already this uh, theorem. But now, since we are in a semi-module, so or um, uh, unfortunately not a, a vector space, uh, but we are in a semi-module, let's talk about bases. And this is uh, maybe a new idea. Um, um, we can talk about linear independence of vectors. Uh, we can talk uh, about linear combination uh, of vectors. So we can also talk about uh, basis of intersection types. We can see intersection types as vectors. Uh, and suddenly, uh, this, those observations lead to a different point of view on intersection types. Uh, so previously, uh, uh, we have shown that this uh, bounded dimensional restriction 
uh, arbitrarily approximates the uh, full system. So as larger this dimension n becomes, the more and more properties uh, you, or, or the more and more types you can derive, and any type can be derived in some dimension. Uh, so therefore, you get um, the stratification of the full system into this uh, pieces, uh, the dimensional bounded pieces. And each piece uh, has subject reduction, so it's a type system that you can uh, use in a programming language. Uh, therefore, by itself, interesting. Uh, also, uh, it has uh, good properties with respect to normal forms and principal types. Uh, you don't, since you don't need intersection reduction to um, uh, type terms by their principal types, uh, when they are normal form, you can have them in dimension one already. And in this work, uh, since we have observed that uh, intersection types for, form this uh, semi-module, so think about additional uh, is just intersection and uh, scalar multiplication is substitution by some substitutions, so strict substitutions. Uh, we can start to think about basis. So this uh, BMN is a set of uh, intersection types or it is a set of uh, uh, vectors such that um, you can derive other typings of a given term M, and M, by the way, um, is not bound to be some normal form. So you have some general term M. You can start thinking about what is the basis uh, for this uh, given term M in uh, bounded dimension N, and hopefully you can compute it. And in this work, we have given an algorithm to actually compute the spaces. It is finite, it's unique, um, and it it's actually spans uh, the typings of the term M in this bounded dimension N. So therefore, maybe the um, uh, takeaway is, uh, if you want uh, a perspective how to uh, algorithmically and algebraically deal with some restrictions of intersection types, maybe because in your uh, particular application, intersection types are crept in and uh, suddenly most of the interesting properties became undecidable, you could take a look at the paper and uh, see some algorithms to maybe tame those intersection types. Uh, here's an example. So again, let's look at this uh, term lambda x, uh, xx. If we run an algorithm uh, implemented by a, uh, a student, an undergraduate student, we uh, get some types for that, and we can find out what the basis is. So here the basis con uh, contains just uh, one type. This type is, by the way, not the principal type of the term, but is, is um, a sort of expanded version of uh, the principal type of the term. Now, the interesting thing is if we uh, look at some other term, sigma, uh, which is maybe complicated, uh, but assignable in dimension two, then we can uh, here at the bottom line take a linear combination of uh, our uh, basis vector and actually produce uh, uh, this term by yes, a linear combination of uh, the substitution uh, applied to the basis vector plus the substitution t applied to the uh, basis vector. So maybe to go one step back and uh, look more ex uh, abstractly onto this, uh, if you consider simple types, then you have some principal typings. Now in the bounded dimension, you have some principal bases. It's not just one type, it's a set of types, but it's a finite set of types, uh, fortunately. Uh, in the simple types, you have uh, instances of this principal type can be assigned to uh, your given term. And now in intersection types, uh, those just become linear combinations. So just a slight generalization of your usual um, principality uh, theory. Uh, for those of you who are uh, more versed in principality, in general principality for intersection types, you know that um, there will be some expansions, uh, type expansion coming into the theory. There will be a liftings, rise operations. Um, and therefore, the, um, the, the theory of principality of intersection types in general is rather heavy. Uh, whereas the um, uh, theory of principality in uh, the bounded dimension is rather simple by means of a principal basis and linear combinations. So there is no uh, type expansion going on uh, during the generation of uh, particular types from a basis. Um, also, the bases are actually computable uh, by an algorithm and uh, 
once you compute the base, uh, you can use type checking uh, by matching, so you don't need unification anymore. You have uh, your types are uh, already given. So this is also algorithmically approachable and decidable in particular. Uh, during our uh, research, we encountered uh, several um, algorithmic problems which we have solved and uh, also applications of uh, those algorithms uh, came up. Uh, so first, uh, one maybe side note is if you are interested in habitation in the intersection type system, it's undecidable. But once you uh, restrict yourself to principle and habitation, so you are interested um, whether uh, you can find some uh, normal form such that your input is the actual principal pair of this uh, normal form, it is surprisingly uh, uh, decidable in polynomial time. So there's a really simple algorithm to um, implement that. This is also strange because usually uh, when we inspect principal inhibition, it uh, takes the same character as uh, the usual inhibition, for example, in um, simple types, it remains p-space complete. But suddenly for intersection types, it jumps from undecidable to polynomial time decidable. And this can be combined with our basis inference algorithm. So since we have an algorithm that deduces types for arbitrary uh, given terms, we can try to compose that uh, idea with um, inhabitations. So given the term M, look at the basis, look at types that this term can assume. Uh, use principal inhibition to see whether there is some uh, principal inhabitant of uh, those uh, basis types. And uh, suddenly you get an algorithm that can compute approximants, uh, so a sound and uh, or a complete and uh, more or less sound up to eta uh, algorithm that can compute normal forms or approximants uh, of your uh, given term without evaluating it. So let's um, quick example. You have some large term. It behave, behaves maybe in some weird uh, fashion. You go in dimension three, uh, use the basis basis inference type algorithm and get uh, a type uh, A arrow A for this particular term. In dimension three, now principal inhibition tells you that the only principal inhabit or the only inhabitant that uh, A arrow A has uh, as its principal type is the identity, and the soundness and completeness, uh, or rather uh, soundness. Uh, tells you that your initial given term actually evaluates to this identity without taking any, so you did not take any beta reduction steps. You use type inference plus inhabitation to uh, produce a normal form the term actually computes to, which is uh, an interesting application of uh, those uh, algorithms we came up during our dimensional analysis. Um, so there are clearly some uh, is clearly some work to do. Uh, there are a lot of open questions. For example, model, model theory uh, for the dimensional fragments, query out correspondence. Um, maybe most, most interesting, um, we are in the semi-module. Uh, can we go into a full-fledged vector space? So maybe there are some notion of negative proofs. Maybe we can subtract proofs uh, from uh, uh, one another. So there is uh, a lot of uh, research still to do. I hope uh, you got some nice uh, insights from uh, what I had. So thank you. Questions? Good talk. Uh, what is the intuition? Why the, the final problem you mentioned there is in polynomial time? So you say it's a real simple algorithm. Um, the intuition is that the types uh, that are principally inhabited, uh, they have a very restricted shape where uh, each type variable occurs at most twice and once positive, once negative. So you can actually link them together and you always know which um, component you are allowed to use and have to use, so therefore it just becomes a straightforward uh, uh, algorithm.
could you say just a little bit more about the connection to model theory that you mentioned? Uh, I did not understand the... Uh, so the, the connection uh, in your conclusion, in your conclusion. In conclusion, yes. uh, I have... Yes. You mentioned mo model theory, so I was just wondering. Um, we have absolutely no idea what the model of uh, this type system is. So since it has nice properties, we expect to be some model, but we have absolutely no idea what it might be. That's why the uh, headline, we have no idea about any of this uh, at this point. Interesting topics, though. That's a, that was a good talk, but hard for the end of the day. But uh, um, can you give an indication of uh, how uh, inhabitation can be used, for example, in, in synthesis? I know you're doing these things, and whether, whether actually the... Uh, you know, the insights you have here, the algorithmic insights, help you uh, in, in various synthesis or in some synthesis questions? Uh, yes. So the main idea for synthesis is that specification is actually the type, and inhabitation provides means to find a piece of code that satisfies those properties. Uh, in bounded dimension, as I presented it here, uh, inhabitation is still undecidable. So that's my... Uh, the first thought, there, there's no hope, but uh, there, is, there are some more restrictions of the full system such that uh, the limitation becomes desirable. It's um, part of Popol 17. Uh, and now for actual practical applications, uh, there are two uh, sides of synthesis, so synthesis from scratch and synthesis from a library of components. If you are looking at um, synthesis uh, from a library of components, you are in some sort of combinatory logic where the combinators are your um, actual components. Uh, synthesis from scratch is uh, sometimes lambda calculus inhabitation. So uh, that's why uh, this could cover um, synthesis from scratch. You have given a type specification. Even in this particular scenario, alpha to alpha is the type specification. You provide a piece of code. So the synthesis algorithm tells you uh, this type is inhabited by the identity. That's why the identity is the synthesized program that uh, satisfies the required property alpha to alpha. Let's thank the speaker.